Um, it's a time series database, uh, specializes in statistical, and it has a graph, uh, statistical and graphing rendering API. Really easy to get data in, really easy to get data out. Um, historically challenging to scale for some people due to a lack of proper documentation, no comment. Um, based on an aging file-based database format, and yet there are a lot of companies out there, and a lot of you are probably part of them, that know how to scale it properly um, and can still throw millions of data points per second at it. Yes, I said millions of data points per second. Um, this is graphite. This is also graphite. This, yes, that's graphite. And for most of you, that's probably what you're familiar with graphite. Um, how did we get here? Um, so I'm not gonna go through the whole story, but long story short, it was developed at Orbitz, uh, started by Chris M. Davis. Screen okay? Um, and then releases open source. Uh, it's been hugely popular. Um, the history of Graphite is pretty well documented here. If you haven't read this, uh, it's a chapter out of the application something something open source something book. Um, really, really good. Um, and there's also this thing. Um, I hear the developers here, or the uh, writers here. Um, note that we actually have a limited number of early release copies of this on hand today. Um, so I think we're going to do a signing this afternoon during the break in the sponsors lounge. Uh, $20 per book, cash only, so while you're out at lunch, try to hit the ATM if you're interested. Uh, all proceeds go to the ACLU. Uh, changing, the changing TSDB landscape. Um, so, you know, historically we've had file-based uh, TSDBs like RRD, uh, then Whisper, Series, uh, if you're following master. Um, we've also had people try to use relational databases, NoSQL databases, uh, using, again, MySQL, Postgres, HBase, Cassandra, Reoc, LevelDB, um, sorry Paul, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, and now we're starting to see more increasingly purpose-built storage engines supporting multi-dimensional tagging, uh, much metrics 2.0 type stuff, uh, high cardinality, and they're specifically designed for modern ephemeral systems, read, you know, uh, virtual machines, containers, cloud, internet of things, the shitty internet of things. And so I'm gonna let you in on a little secret. Uh, there is no silver bullet when it comes to time series databases. And I think we probably used to say this about logging and the same, same principle. Once you accept that there will be compromises, whether it's write speed, read speed, uh, the fr footprint on disk or in memory, uh, your deployment complexity, your query language, your high cardinality, push versus pull, and on and on and on, then you can determine what your trade-offs are, which ones are most important to you, and you can actually start planning and building with those in mind. So why are we here today? So we're here to talk about Graphite, specifically 1.0-ish. But what does that mean? Um, increasingly, I personally like to think of Graphite as a statistical engine. Um, it's got, you know, the, the, the future of it has pluggable data backends and rendering functions. But right now, today, it means continuing to provide the best possible reference implementation of the Graphite stack that we possibly can. To be blunt, it starts with moving beyond 09x. I, I love 09x. Um, most of you, probably 99.x percent of you, are running 09x, uh, and it's served as the main line for our releases over the last few years. Um, unfortunately, in a lot of ways, that's held us back. And by that, I'm mostly talking about developers who want to do cool new stuff, but couldn't do it on 09x without some drastic refactoring. But I really, really, really love 09x. <laughs> Again, I, I love the branch. It's been awesome, um, and we've cut a bunch of great releases from it. Um, and, and though it didn't have all the, the, the new shiny stuff that we have in master, I love it because a lot of us just use it to get shit done. Um, companies all over the world use it every day to drive visibility into their networks, their systems, their applications, and their business. And it's gonna keep doing those things, but we want and we need a code base that allows us to extend it more easily. Okay, so after years in incubation mode, we're basically ready to cut a, cut a new major release, uh, 0 0.10 or 1.0 or whatever you wanna call it, the master branch is very, uh, very stable. If you see my blog post, you've seen we can do 300,000 metrics per second on a single node. Um, we want users to continue to hammer it while we, or, sorry, to continue using it and testing it while we hammer out a couple lingering bugs. Um, but we're really close, seriously close, within the next couple of weeks close. Um, highlights, uh, 1.0. Um, thought it'd be a good time to talk about some of the upcoming features, although a lot of these have technically been the, ma the master code base for a lot of years. If you're running 0.9, you never actually saw them. 
So this is a big one. This is a big win for anybody that wants to move to master. It's this idea of pluggable storage finders. Um, there are external ones out there already, external projects that stand alone. Sinite, which is based on Cassandra. Uh, KairosDB, again, also I think based on Cassandra. OpenTSDB with HBase. Um, anyways, these use Graphite. Uh, Graphite can read it from it on the back end and, and render uh, the statistical transformations and, and serve it out to the users. Uh, pluggable carbon protocols. Again, this is a cool thing. Uh, if you're not versed in carbon, you may not understand like what the, you know, the importance of it is. But basically, it just means like we can do stuff beyond plain text and pickle and AMQP, and we can start building on other stuff like protobufs or whatever. Um, a quick shout out to the guys who added so much, uh, so much testing, uh, test coverage to uh, the master branch. Uh, it's amazing stuff. We can actually do talks. We can do Travis CI, stuff that we couldn't do with 09X. Um, Imbru improved brace expansion and Globstar, basically um, complex wildcards, nested braces, Globstars. Um, who knows what a Globstar is? Okay. Apple does not because it kept auto-correcting to lobsters. Um, improved character support, Unicode, uh, time zones, things of that nature. Um, quick mention of the updated requirements, Python 2.7, Django 1.9, twisted, higher than that. Uh, some new optional components, uh, Carbonet. Written by a friend of mine at GitHub, uh, Scott Sanders. Uh, it's basically it's a suite of small, sharp utilities used to, um, that you use together. You can use to uh, rebalance or uh, uh, redistribute, rebalance or repair uh, Whisper nodes, um, and which actually is not that necessary now since 0914 has the time series merge stuff. Uh, but then there's also Series, which is an experimental replacement to uh, Whisper. So you might actually look into that. There's a new document out there for, for Series. Um, Lots of new functions. Uh, this was actually supposed to be the highlight of the, the whole uh, presentation, but we're short on time now, but I'm gonna power through it. Um, okay, aggregate line. Uh, this is aggregate line, uh, so that's a thing. Um, so it actually supports three different target functions. So you can say, aggregate this line to the average min and max. Again, look it up. Apply by node, uh, yeah, um, I can't even. Um, average outside percentile, uh, it's actually really cool. Um, I want to say that it filters everything outside of a particular percentile. Um, in this case, it's uh, 80, so that's actually kind of cool. Um, delay, uh, I don't know if it's obvious, but you can actually delay. So it's basically time shifting, um, except not. Um, so that's kind of neat. Uh, fallback series, provide a fallback series in case it's empty or all nulls. Um, grep. Basically, it's like rep. Uh, so you know, you're looking for that matching namespace. Uh, group by nodes is like group by node, but multiple nodes. Integral by interval. Uh, this is really cool because it basically takes uh, your gauge um, and turns it into a counter, but on intervals. Um, so it's useful for like if you want to look at a daily uh, breakdown of a metric as it counts. Um, interpolate, which I think most people know what interpolate means. In this case, it behaves like line mode connected, but it also supports a limit arg. Um, so, and of course, it's per series, so you don't have to do it on the entire graph. Um, invert. <laughs> Love this one. Wait, wait, wait for it. Yes. <laughs> okay, this is invert. Basically, it does a one divided by y in this case. Um, so, I'm sure there's a use case for that. Uh, is non-null. Sorry, I didn't actually have time to put notes down which all these are. Um, this has something to do with it counts the number of series that are not, that don't have nulls, something like that. Um, again, useful for if you're trying to find out if a system is down, look that up. Linear regression, I'm not smart enough to understand linear regression, but here it is. And then linear regression analysis, if I wasn't smart enough to understand that, definitely not gonna understand this one. Uh, map series, reduce series, just like what you would think, map and reduce. Look at the documentation, they have some very good examples there. Uh, multiply series of wildcards, if you used add or average, sum or average wild, a series of wildcards, it's just like that, but with multiplication. Offset to zero. This one's a little interesting, and I can't remember the use case for us, but I'm sure, there, I, I didn't merge it, so I can't justify it, but yes. Um, no. Uh, power. Again, statistical stuff, math stuff. Uh, remove per between percentile. Only render series that have a value outside the nth percentile of all values within an interval. <laughs> remove empty series sounds exactly like what you'd expect. If the entire series is null, don't, don't pull it in, don't show it. 
Uh, sort by total uh, basically adds up all of the series, uh, or add the, all the values per series, and uh, sorts them by that amount. Square root does square root. Um, time slice is cool. Um, so it actually, the use case here was uh, there was an ISP who wanted to actually show the breakdown of an interface for a customer as it changed over month. And I guess the, the interface, the name of the interface had changed or something. So it basically allows you to do contigu contiguous spans across disparate metrics. In this case, it's actually the same metric, but you get the idea. That's pretty cool. Uh, vertical line makes a vertical line. Um, it's like, uh, uh, what's the uh, infinite thing, except you can just do arbitrary lines to your heart's content. Um, weighted average. And we have some new display formats. We have uh, PDF. Um, it, it is, it's an interesting output format, and it doesn't look exactly like the source. Um, so you can see that was with 2,800 to get that. Um, uh, there's DiGraph, if you use DiGraph or the Rickshaw frameworks, um, so that's pretty cool. Um, and some new, zone, uh, new graph options, hide null from legend, does what it sounds like. If you have a null series, it will actually hide that. So a lot of cases you might get a lot, bunch of just, like if you're having to do wild cards, you get a bunch of junk series. Um, you can hide those out of the legend. Uh, hide x-axis, no null points specifically for uh, JSON output. Um, some pi, yes, there are actually people that use pi graphs with graphite. It's a thing, in case you didn't know. Um, anything else? How much, how much time we have? <laughs> Negative time. Um, uh, so yeah, a couple of things. We have a new logo. Yeah. Everybody got stickers? Yeah. Love the new logo. Very cool. Uh, props to Rain Tank for that. Um, new settings, things. OK. Um, yeah. Any proud progressives in the audience? Woo! Wow, not nearly as many as I expected. Thank you.